So hello everyone. I'm Sakshi Rani. I'm a final year MBBS student, and I'll be talking a little bit about the support systems and resources which are available in medical schools and institutions. Um, before we move on to the kind of uh, resources available, I want to uh, talk a little bit in detail about how do you identify if someone needs to seek help or how do you know if you are actually having a good mental health or not. So there are some factors which um, define good mental health. Now, these are all definitions. But in short, it means that a mentally healthy person is someone who realizes his own, own potential, doesn't feel insecure by comparing themselves with others, uh, is in a position to be able to understand, love, and trust others, is not overwhelmed by any sort of feelings, either of fear, anger, love, or guilt. And a mentally healthy person is someone who can work productively and fruitfully and is able to make a contribution to his or her own community. So here are some questions. I'll be reading them out one by one. You have to answer them in your own head, okay? And if answers for at least like two or three of them also are, are yes for you, that means you probably have poor mental health or you, you should take it as a red flag that, um, you know, you probably are on the on the verge of uh, an emotional burnout. So are you always worrying? Are you unable to concentrate because of unrecognized reasons? Are you continuously unhappy without justified cause? Do you lose temper easily and often? Are you troubled by regular insomnia? Do you have wide fluctuations in your mood? Do you continuously dislike to be with other people? Are you upset if the routine of your life is disturbed? Do peers often get on your nerves? Are you constantly bitter and round off? Are you afraid without any real cause? Are you always right and the other person always wrong? And you have numerous aches and pains for which no doctor can find a physical cause. And these kind of questions are also the ones which uh, us, us psychologists generally ask you if you go to um, seek help of any kind. So if, you, if you're answering these questions as yes, or if you are uh, troubled by any of these symptoms, then you should probably uh, seek some form of support. Um, so obviously, you're not there are four broad kinds of mental health issues. Uh, you, you can have mood disorders, thought disorders, anxiety disorders, which mood disorders doesn't just mean anorexia, but it can also mean stress eating, binge eating, and all sorts of things. Um, so how do you treat poor mental health? Before we understand that, we have to understand what is the basis or how, uh, how are we planning on treating uh, mental health issues, right? So this is like a cycle. Any part or any uh, any part of the cycle goes wrong, you'll be you'll be dealing with a mental health issue. So when we are treating mental health issues, we don't just have to treat the consequences or the final results, but we have to address the root of the matter. So your thoughts are going to affect your feelings. Your feelings affect your behaviors, which are your choices, your exercise of free will, and whatever behaviors uh, that you participate in, those are going to give those are going to give rise to consequences, and consequences can be. Um, consequences in terms of your relationships, career, mentally, or even physically. So when we want to treat the final consequence, we also have to look at what were the thoughts which affected your feelings, which led to you behaving in a particular way, which eventually had the particular consequence. Um, so needs. These, um, there are some basic uh, human needs, I would say, that everyone has. And when these needs are not realized or when, when there is some form of um, trouble recognizing or realizing realizing these needs, most people have some or the other sort of mental health issue, right? So your need for affection, belonging, independence, your need for achievement, which is what um, most of us medical students, because we're so used to being some form of rancor or topper somewhere that we still seek academic, um, uh, academic achievement as our only source of uh, emotional support and if you don't receive it which is very very difficult in a five-year long course to have um to be at the top of your academic game for the for the entirety of five years that most people slip into some form of um i i would say depression but some or the other form of self-doubt or anxiety the need for recognition the need for a sense of personal growth and for self-actualization any of these needs is not realized then people generally um, uh, do not feel the best mentally. Um, so 
when we are caring for others before that we have to know that we have to care for ourselves as my co co speakers already have discussed uh, the various ways in which you can take care or prioritize your own mental health i'll just quickly go through, go through all this i'm um, like make good lifestyle changes um all of us are used to um, you know weird and erratic routines where we are barely getting 3 to 4 hours of sleep and even during uh, not only just during exams but it has become like a part of our um, everyday life like we're binge watching a series at night or if you're doing something in the morning and then we're trying to catch up the uh, the lost time at night and that is leading to a very very a uh, disturbed not just lifestyle but eventually it affects your um, hormones and just uh, your uh, feeling you have to change your diet uh yeah when you care for yourself there's no problem in seeking help from therapist or psychiatrist which i'll be talking a little bit about, uh, in detail about when i move on to support system talk about your feeling stay active or uh, take breaks okay so a lot of us uh, do not uh, i don't know are motivated by this a uh, huge thing where you're like i want to study for 10 hours or 12 hours or 4 5 hours at a stretch and it is really um, not the most sustainable way to study so taking sufficient and adequate breaks is very important a uh, drink sensibly and i don't just mean uh, any form of caffeinated beverages or indulging in alcohol but also stay very very hydrated a lot of us uh, have moved out of our homes or have completely changed cities or states so it's very very important you please mute yourself thank you okay it's very important to stay in touch with your friends and family and uh, the ninth point is something i'd like to talk about right do something you are good at and i don't mean that you have to be really uh, you have to be the best at what you're doing but i what i mean is that have a hobby have something outside of academics that keeps you engaged that refreshes you and don't just seek academic validation for the for five years and you know keep trying to push yourself towards towards nothing i mean because uh, it's just a very long course right so you have to find hobbies you have to find things which cheer you up a little bit and it can be any form of extracurriculars it can be painting or dancing or sports or things like that right um accept who you are um do not have these unrealistic expectations from yourself by comparing yourself to others obviously it's good to push yourself um to keep trying to grow but at this particular time whoever you are whatever your limits are you have to identify that and only then will you be satisfied with yourself and be able to achieve the best that you can do not be shy to ask for help and then care for others and invest in positive online resources like some uh, you know good uh, things which give you good vibes like any sort of a uh, motivating book or songs movies podcasts and things like that so after you have cared for yourself and you are at the peak of your own mental health can you care for others so you have to look for warning signs which i have already described in the first few uh, first presentation uh, ask people how they are listen to them you don't always have to uh, be there to give advice or be there for with solutions sometimes all people just uh, need to vent out you know so you can just be there as a listener if you think that you personally cannot help someone you can help them connect with someone who can help them now that can be um, a, a verified therapist or a psychologist or someone from psychiatry your friendship is very important to them and the last point uh, as we are hearing a lot of uh, news about all kinds of toxicity that people are uh, facing in not only in their own institutions but I, i i feel overall i gathered the idea that it's a it's a national thing that it's a very a mentally stressful course it's a uh, there's lot of work there's lot of burnout not just when you are uh, studying for the four, for four or five years but also eventually when you go to internship and residency so uh, i think change starts with you okay so when you are a kind senior when you bring when you break the chain can you can you you know increase the positivity and so remember how so i think all of us have that one or two seniors where uh, whom we have I reached out to when we were at our lowest and they have been very nice very kind very supportive and we appreciate the presence of their presence in our lives and i think when you try to be that kind of senior to anyone who is um your subordinate or even for your peers it goes a long way um so i'll be talking about support system as paul me and ahan already mentioned that you should talk to your friends your family um you know people who you feel comfortable with people who you think will understand you 
if you are lucky enough to have really good seniors as friends, you can talk to them. A lot of uh, colleges have mentorship programs. Now, I'm not, avail I'm not sure if your particular college has one. But at the beginning of uh, first year or at the beginning of each year, they connect you with the professor. If you're lucky enough to have someone who is um, very kind, understanding, or someone you vibe with, you can always reach out to them. Uh, counselors, psychologists, and therapists. Some colleges have uh, college counselors. I'm not aware if all of them have them. But there are a lot of online apps, websites, and uh, places where you can uh, directly reach out for e-counseling or tele-counseling. Some cities and states have offline facilities for counseling and therapy as well, but it's uh, your convenience. Do not shy out from reaching out to psychiatrists as well, your college psychiatry department or any 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 personal practitioner that you know, you can reach out to them. Uh, not only will they prescribe medications if they think that that is what is required if you're going through anxiety or depression or any anything of that sort, but they'll also uh, help you deal with uh, your emotions in a better way. They'll, they'll tell you about um, coping mechanisms, how to have healthy coping mechanisms, what are unhealthy or negative coping mechanisms, and just identify how you react to certain negative situations and move beyond that in a better way. There are certain mental health helplines and NGOs that I'll be talking about soon. Uh, so the resources available. You have to know that severe mental illness is not a character flaw, right? And the government has ensured that under the Mental Health Act, I think everyone is um, guaranteed the access to free mental health services. So if you if you approach any government-funded institute, I think you'll be finding centers where uh, these kind of services are offered. Now, I'm not uh, exactly sure how much this is convenient or functional. So there's this thing called Kiran Helpline, which is a 24-7 toll-free helpline to provide support to people who are suffering from anything, right? from anxiety, stress, depression, or even something severe like having suicidal thoughts or any other mental health concerns. The number is on the screen. For anyone who feels that they uh, want to have this helpline with them or want to share it with their friends or someone they know, you can take a screenshot or I'll be putting it in the chat box as well. And um, you can it's it's provided by the government of India. It's 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 work it's fun working and functional. And anyone who wants to vent out to someone or uh, not someone in person but on call. And, uh, you know, if you just remember it at the top of your head, you can uh, call this number. There's something called as the Manus mobile app. Again, it was it was uh, given by the government of India and it promotes your mental health and well-being in all age groups for any kind of problems that you have. And you can download it on your phone and use it. There are various other national helplines and NGOs that are available. And if you just uh, go online and if you search up, the things which come on the top of your search list are the ones which are uh, used by a lot of people and they're very good. Um, so in the end, again, I'll be briefly talking about what Paulmi has said about resilience. So resilience is the capacity to adapt successfully in the face of threats or disaster, right? And people can improve their capacity for resilience at any time. So probably when you joined the course or at the beginning, you weren't as um, mentally or emotionally strong or resilient. And now you might be, or you might be on the verge of uh, increasing your resilience. So, um, and being resilient doesn't really mean going through life without experiencing any stress or pain. And people feel all kinds of uh, emotions, right? Grief, sadness, uh, and everything. But resilience is, uh, you know, resilience is going to develop when you grow and gain better thinking of your own self-management skills. And um, just because no one else can heal or do your inner work for you doesn't mean you can, should, or need to do it alone. And I'll end with a quote. Make your mental health a priority because it is not self-indulgence, it is self-preservation. Only if you look after yourself can you look after others. Thank you. If anyone has any questions, you can put it in the chat box.